So as you can see, we are back in my game room for today's video. And what we're gonna be talking about is this NZXT microphone. Actually, the capsule mini right here, and then the boom arm mini. And I wanna, I wanna talk to you guys for a second before we actually dive into the test. As you're hearing the microphone on my camera, I want you to kind of focus on that. And talking about me testing microphones, I'm a gamer, right? I wanna plug and play and see how it is, and, and I want the best performance for it, not breaking the bank too much, right? I'm not a, you know, audiophile or this crazy audio type of person. Audio is my passion, hands down, but I like the simplicity within audio. Hence, even with my YouTube microphones and my cameras, it's a DD boom, watch my dingle, plug 3.5 out of my camera, I record my audio right in sync with my camera. Talking about my room setup here, going along with that, I don't have much sound dampening. I mean, I'm still recently moved into this house, so it's not set up too much. I got a fan on low right there. I got a big light behind you guys that has a fan in it as well. So again, getting the environment, a vibe, it's like a standard room. This isn't like a built-out studio where we got all this sound dampening. You're going to get false just like these, you know, not a true user's experience or sound of the microphone. What you're getting here is a gamer, a consumer to consumer, and again, a typical room setup. Nothing built for microphone tests. And how we're gonna go about this test is, of course, we're gonna take a look at what we get out of the box first, and then we're gonna plug it up, get that sound test. I'm gonna compare it up to my main microphone that I usually use, is the Elgato Wave 3. Been using this mic for so long, no joke, I absolutely love this microphone. And then what I'm also gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and get my Odyssey Maxwells back there, plug up that microphone and see how it stacks up to a basic pair of gaming headphones as well. Again, in this standard, just normal environment. Now what I wanted to show you first was a stinking microphone off the arm, but my gracious, I can't get it off here. Like, I didn't even, oh mercy, I, I need to get some pliers or something. Oh, Jim. So now that I finally have the microphone disconnected, I wanna show you what you get in your box. Of course, you get your microphone. You get this nice, heavy-duty microphone stand, which actually has a little rubber grip on the bottom right there, your little thread adapter, and then, of course, your manual. Now, talking about everything as we're just feeling right there, I just wanna tell you, and I even have these little, uh, these little screws on the side is how you actually mount it to there, and then you can tilt it forward and back. It doesn't go left or right or anything, just forward and back on the stand. But I'm gonna bust out my scale and show you guys something here. This is really weird to me. So I'm gonna put the stand, the little, uh, our little stand for the microphone, and we're getting 411 grams. Let's take that off again, that's, that's lofty. Then we take the microphone, and again, I'm, I'm gonna leave these screws on the side right here. We are getting 141 grams. No joke, no exaggeration. This microphone is incredibly lightweight, which, out of the box in the hand, myself, I get the vibe of, yo, this microphone's gonna be cheap. But of course, that, that is a bad way to go about it, and that's not how we're gonna go about it. I just wanna let you know that, yes, the microphone alone is incredibly lightweight, but as you're looking at it over here, I mean, it's stylish, it's sleek, it's simplistic. Again, these screws over here on the side come off, and that is how you mount it to that stand. If we pull these out right here, Oh, it's threaded in there really, really good. And you can see then it's bare on the side. Bam, put it in there, thread it, and that's how it's gonna mount into your stand. Now, if you look on the bottom here, you see you have your USB-C connection. This is your thread mount. So if you put it to an arm like we're gonna put on over there, you have that option. And then over here you have, oop, this way you have your 3.5 where you can plug your headset into. On the front, you have your volume, which is gonna control your headset actually. Nice tactile steps, not sure if you can hear it. Nice tactile steps in there and you can even press it down to mute the microphone. Now, before we plug up the microphone, I wanna show you the mini boom as well, which I'm really liking this stand. It's just simple, as you see, you can tilt it forward right here, you got the other arm up there, and then it can tilt up here. Now, now one thing I do wish it had is you can tilt it the opposite way, kinda of like left and right over here, rather than just forward and back, but I really like it. It twists, it's, it's, it's fairly silent, you don't hear any scratching or anything, you can tuck your cable behind it, and as you all saw, whenever we mounted it, I mean, this sucker does not come off. So again, I really like this little mini arm, plus it's just 
sleek and stylish. And now you are hearing the NZXT microphone. As you can see, it's pretty much right in front of my face right here. You can see the graph outs picking up pretty nice and manageable. It's not peeking out anywhere, not too low or anything. And again, I'm pretty much talking right on it. Now, as you're seeing, this is one thing where I talked about the stand where I wish it could bend again right up here at the connection. I wish we can get that extra adjustment because right now, since it's the mini arm, it comes out. I mean, you can take it and maybe stretch it out like that. That might be better, 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 but then it's going to be right in front of your screen right there. By the way, I just want to check that. You can see I'm hitting the arm. Is it picking up much noise throughout there? Let's see if we adjust the arm. I mean, that was some serious aggressive arm adjustment, but now we can see if adjusting the arm with the microphone on it, is it any different? Say if you get a mild adjustment. Are we getting any feedback from the arm into the microphone? Now, like I showed you before or told you, again, you can press the middle for the mute button. You got the little white LED up here right now. Hopefully you guys can see that. If we press it, as you can see, it did mute right there and didn't pick up any sound, which is nice because some uh, headsets or whatever, when you mute it, you still get a little bit of that feedback in the background. Now, again, you got that dial right here, but that is for your headset whenever you plug it up 3.5, which we'll talk a little bit more about that as well. Oh, I accidentally pressed the mute button. Say if the microphone's sitting over here, we're right at our screen and say if we're pressing some uh, uh, keys. So here we go, pressing on a keyboard. I'm gonna see if we get some feedback if I say I've slapped down on my mouse in the middle of a game, because again, our stand is mounted onto the desk. Let's see if we get any feedback if I accidentally hit the desk. I see the stand actually moving, which by the way, you can tighten. They got these little screws on the side right there. Yeah, now it's not moving. So you can tighten that up, loosen it how easily you wanna adjust it. But again, now, this whole time, we've been talking kind of straight at the screen when our microphone's been over here to the left, which I think is the majority of the way a lot of us will be using it. Now, again, with so many different ways we can move this microphone with the stand, again, how we had it set right there is how I would use it and how my microphones always are just off to the distance. I want to know how you guys use your microphone. As you see right now with this stand, you can tilt it, put it up underneath here, and it's not in front of your screen, but it's right in front of your mouth. I bet I bet this sounds better than how we did before, so you're kind of eliminating a lot of that echo within the room, but if, our, if it's right above our keyboard, is it gonna pick up more sound like that? Maybe from our mouse. How much more is it picking up? But that, that's really cool. Again, with this arm combo, all the flexibility and positions you can put it in. But anyways, now we've been listening to the NZXT Capsule Mini. I wanna go on and fire up our Elgato Wave 3 and see how it compares to that. And then we'll go into a headset. And now you're hearing the Elgato Wave 3. Again, it's off to the left because this is where my microphones always stay off to the left. Now, if I get on to the Elgato Wave 3, I do have this little filter right here. I don't know if it does much because it's just right in the front and it's metal. It's not one of the foam ones, you know? But if we're right on it, we can see, wow, it's picking up a lot. It really is. Now, on the Elgato Wave 3, you can actually tone it down, which I, I really like that because you can adjust your headphone, your mix, and then again, your microphone volume right on it. It's one of the things I just love about the Elgato. Also, you got the little, you got the little tap mute down there. I, I'm not reviewing the Elgato Wave 3. I'm just doing that comparison, you know. Now, again, when we're talking prices, much different. But again, talking sound to sound in this environment, if I'm just doing some basic gaming, talking right on with the microphone over there getting that actual sound difference whenever you get it right set right on to you again wow you can see this one is picking up just a whole bunch right there but my main thing that i want to hear is which one's kind of reducing a lot of that background noise and kind of giving us that a little more quality studio sound that that's what i really want to figure out right here but again we just listen to the nzxt we're listening to the elgato and again i'm leaving my setup how i believe a lot of us will have set up in our room off to the distance of our monitor and bam so we can see our screen and we're actually gaming and this is the elgato wave 3. and now you're hearing a microphone from the odyssey maxwell gaming headset now we all know this headset has like that well, I forget what it is, the, the microphone tweak and whatever, where you press the button, whatever, and it kind of blocks out some of the sound, picks up the gain. We're not using any of that right now. This is a standard core microphone, which, again, is exactly how I did the other ones. I didn't go into software, dabble with anything, tweak anything, and adjust, which, by the way, you do have a some 
basic simple software on NZXT, which I'll show you in a second. But again, all these microphones are simply plugged and played. We're not going into anything, tweaking, dabbling with anything. Again, I don't got any sound uh, dampening in my room, just basic setup. And I wanted to give you that core experience. And again, uh, comparing a gaming headset to a microphone that's twice the price of the NZXT compared to the NZXT. Now, just looking at our graph as we're seeing here, we can see the uh, Maxwell is picking up a lot less than either of these other two microphones. Um, we're going to have to hear these back and actually see the uh, difference. Um, but again, uh, I want to be quiet because it looks like it's picking up a lot of background noise here. Let me see. Yeah, see, I can see it kind of dancing around just slightly back there. Now, my PC is chugging. It is. Um, and I got the fan running again. So I think it's picking up a little bit of that. And it seems like it's picking up more than either of these. But again, we're comparing gaming headset microphone to the other two to see, again, is it justifiable to even buy a mid-range microphone or a budget microphone compared to your plug-and-play gaming headset microphone that you already have. So now that we had a good listen to, again, the gaming headset, the Wave, and the NZXT, I want to bring it back to the NZXT just so we can kind of vibe together and see what it's like here. Again, I'm a little further from the microphone now. I can pull it up closer a little bit here. I really wish there was that other adjustment right up here so I can just get that slight tweak right there if I'd want it. But what I want to do is pull up the NZXT software here. So you can see you got your microphone. Now this is straight 74, kind of a little bit above midway. If I pull it down here a little bit, we're at 48. You can see if it sounds any better. Let me go on and drop it down to 15. I'm sure I'm sounding pretty low. But say if you put it right at that 50 mark here. So we're at halfway. I'm right up on the microphone so you can see what that sounds like. Again, I'm back over here. Kind of just getting my basic gaming on. The microphone's off to the side. We're at 50%. Let's go and put it back where we were. We were right around the 70s. We'll put it at 76 is what it sounds like. Now, the other thing I want to show you right here, you're seeing audio. Again, you can plug your headset right up there. 3.5 headset into there and adjust your volume. You can adjust it right on it. See? Turn it down, and it goes down right there. Crank it up, it goes there. It's also synced with Windows. If you're seeing up here, crank it down, it adjusts, crank it up. So, so it's simultaneous there. But one thing you got to notice is, so I was testing it with my um, Epos H6 Pros back there. You can adjust the volume on that. That doesn't sync to Windows because you're going 3.5. So whatever you're using to it, you got to adjust the volume here and then into your device if it's not syncing up. So just remember that running uh, 3.5. Now, the other thing you have is side tone which is real nice when you plug in your headset, you can adjust your side tone right here. And it's a really nice crystal clear balanced side tone. And again, being able to tweak it so much right there, you, you never feel like you're hollering in, in into your headset, you know, with a side tone. It's very nice. You're not getting too much background noise. It's just, the, it's one of the better side tones I've ever heard, honestly, because you get some of them, you almost get like the static or it sounds like you're always yelling in your ears. You can't hear your game or anything. This was really nice. Again, one of the better side tones I have heard on a on a device before. Now, I want to go back to the audio here. Plug in 3.5. Just for anyone that's curious, if you're taking a headset, plugging it into here, are you going to get a boost? Are you going to get an audio just enhancement out of it? No, you're not. Believe it or not, it almost dumbs down your audio. So again, I'm going 8.6 Pros. Also test my VZRs. So you got a little bit of different what takes more to drive or whatnot. But again, even H6 Pros that don't take a lot to drive, man, it sounded so bad. It was just, again, dumbed down. There wasn't any body, any life. I cranked it up across all of my sources within Windows on here, made sure everything was cranked up, even on the headset. And there's like, it, it, it took the bass away for us somehow. It took the mids away. It was almost like, man, like phone speakers. That's what it sounded like. It, it was a pretty horrible experience. So if you're looking for that feature, and me raving about side tone, I'm going to tell you to wash all that clear and don't even focus on that as a selling point for this microphone or even a feature, which stinks. Because again, the side tone's awesome, but when you plug your headset into this, it's horrible. It, it's going to cut your headset in half. It's, it's just something I do not recommend you using at all. So now you're back to my microphone on my camera. And I just listened to all of the microphone tests we just did right there from the headset to the Elgato Wave 3 to the NZXT, and they were all significantly different, I really believe. I mean, number one, the Maxwell microphone, I thought sounded pretty stinking good, right? The Elgato sounded the best. The NZXT had potential, okay? Now, now catch me right there. I'm not saying it sounded bad, because I thought it sounded 
very good, but it picked up the most background noise, I believe, probably exactly how my camera microphone is right now, because it's in front of me right here, so it's picking up everything else around. That's exactly what we're probably gonna get from my camera microphone. That's the vibe I got from the NZXT. Now, where I say potential, number one, with the Boom Arm Mini right here, whenever we were typing, it picked up so much radiation and vibration throughout the desk into it. Whenever I was moving, it wasn't that bad, but whenever I was just typing, basically, it, it caught a lot of that through there. So I'm gonna say, no, don't get the Boom Arm Mini as much as I like it. I, I really like this Boom Arm Mini. It's 70 bucks and I think it's cool for the price, but again, with the vibration is picking up through it was a bit of a stinker for me. Maybe if you mount it to a separate table, maybe like that, that, that might be what I do actually. And so again, you're not getting that vibration. I see my wave is on an actual legit like a musician's mic stand out there. And that's why I have it set like that. So you get no vibration. And that is like 30 bucks. So again, you can kind of look at it that way. There, there's number one potential. Don't get the boom arm. Number two potential I really think this have could reduce some of that room noise is get a basic microphone, uh, foam, little windscreen over it, you know, a little pop filter, whatever. You can probably get those for like five bucks, if not less, put it over it and you're gonna be perfectly fine. And the cool thing is it's not gonna cover up your LED, which like if you put one over this, you kind of block your uh, mute function or something like that. And some other like the HyperX microphones, you uh, block the button up top. So again, putting a pop filter over this is gonna be really nice, cheap, and I believe very beneficial. So so again, let's, let's bring it back to the NZXT Capsule Mini coming in at 70 bucks. Do I recommend it? Yeah, yeah, I really do. I like this microphone. I really like this microphone. What I don't recommend, again, is the boom arm. And that's how we had it set and tested right there. The biggest downfall of this microphone is as far as the room, the noise pickup. Again, I don't have any sound dampening, so yours could be completely different. But myself tested many other budget microphones from, say, HyperX or Razer, which they got good options. I just like the purity, the simplicity, and the natural sound you're getting from this. I, I really got a vibe that, hey, I'm listening to myself. It sounded that good. The mute function, I stated before, every microphone should have that right there. Some of the other budget options don't have that. So I, I really do like this microphone. But again, I'm gonna link this other mic stand, and it's a really good option. I don't know if you've thought about this before. You set it back there, you can kind of adjust the arm wherever you want. It's not on your desk or anything. It's cheap, it's simple, and it does what you need to do. And with it set up that way, that's where I'm gonna recommend this microphone. Let me know what you think right down in the comments. Let me know if you enjoyed this video as far as all these different tests, kind of bringing you into a different environment and kind of testing together, you know what I mean? So let me know right down below. And again, hit the thumbs up if you enjoyed the video if I was able to help you out. Don't forget to subscribe, and I hope to catch you in the next one. Bye now. <laughs>